Hello, hello. I want to welcome everyone back to Cosette Contemplates. And I'm really excited because we are going to be doing a part two to the Halloween edition. Um, and so last last session on Zoom, you got to see Miss Samantha Morden with Mystique Paranormal Research Society. And so she is back with us and she's going to show us like some of her gadgets and talk about different types of hauntings and just going to be a really good episode if you're new to the paranormal. Um, you know, there's so many approaches to how people understand it with researchers like you, Samantha, then you have measurable evidence to, to um to talk about it you know and then some people just have this spiritual side or where they might be gifted like empathically or some other way um to discern spirits but um thank you for coming back samantha absolutely um we're gonna have quite a few visitors with this because i'm in my rodent room so i have my rats and my mice and all that um hopefully they'll be semi-quiet for this but if you hear random weird noises that's that's the mice of the rats <laughs> <laughs> it's okay <laughs> they're so cute i hope they will at least make one appearance so <laughs> i will show you whoever you want to see okay okay because they're super <laughs> adorable <laughs> yes 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 awesome so when you and i were talking you said you kind of wanted to kick off this session with maybe like a disclaimer some kind of an insight you'd like to share yeah so on the last one if you watched it we talked a lot about demonic um cases and demonic hauntings and i realized afterwards that everyone's going to think that oh my god non-human malicious entities or demons are everywhere and that's not the yeah. case actually right. It's actually rare to have that type of haunting. Right. So, yeah. So I'm going to say that. Um, and just kind of real quick. So there's four different types of hauntings. You have intelligent haunting, and that's what we think of as a ghost. You know, someone like you or I that's passed on that can um, intellig intelligently communicate with you. Right. You have that. Then you have residual hauntings, which is not a, um, that there's no actual entity there. It's something that happened either repetitively or traumatically that made an imprint. Right. On its so that could be like every Friday night at three in the morning, you hear someone coming up your, you know, your staircase. There's never anybody there. There's not actually a ghost. Um, it's going to happen no matter what you do. It's just there. Um, yeah. Then the next is poltergeist, which that takes a lot of explaining. It's not Okay, so the movie Poltergeist, just throw that out. That has nothing to do with Poltergeist. Um, in German, Poltergeist means noisy ghost, but it's actually a haunting that's caused by a living human. Hmm. Yeah, and there's a lot of detail that I could go into with that. Um, the, the human is called an agent and it's usually, well, it's pretty much always unknown that that person is doing it. They're not consciously doing it, it's a subconscious thing. Okay. Um, but that could be an entire session to talk about. Poltergeist I was going to say, <laughs> I would love to delve into yeah. that because I have heard, I've heard of that, you know, yeah. that the noisy ghost, it's actually emanating from us. Yes. So yeah, I would yep. love to hear you explain that. Sure. Absolutely. Um, the, sometimes like you hear paranormal investigators say that's poltergeist activity, like if things get moved, but that yeah. we're just saying the type of activity is things being moved and a lot of times, well, poltergeist activity, that is what happens. So sometimes that word is used interchangeably in that sense, but an actual poltergeist haunting is something different. Um, okay. Then the other is inhuman. That just, and that lumps in three different things. So you have what we already talked about, demonic or, you know, non-human entities that have malicious intent. So then you have the, the opposite of that, which people would consider angels. So you have non-human entities that are benign or, you know, positive. Mm -hmm. um, and I will say that I think I've only had one experience with that and it was very limited, um, but it is something that's out there. Um, then the other is elemental and elemental is um, tied to the earth or water. Right. So to the 
sentence. And that's something that was never human, but it was something, it, it, elemental entities are not out to hurt you. They don't have malicious intent, but they just kind of don't care. So you can get hurt by an elemental, but it wasn't an intentional act for them. Gotcha. And those were too. Like I've ran into that at one location. So. Um, oh, you ran into an elemental. Mm -hmm. And it was, was an there... outside, like a for heavily forested area. That's what I was going to ask you. So, yeah. um, growing up, my brother, in retrospect, I understand it now. My brother, um, El being encountering elementals was pretty normal for him because yeah. we grew up on this 80 plus acre 100 acre cattle farm in a very rural town and um, I remember he would come home with the craziest stories wow. and we never would believe him but he always had this really um, a lot of spiritual activity around him and so, you know, as I've grown into adulthood and in retrospect, I'm like, what he described, I'm like, that was elementals. Yeah. So, yeah, hopefully it, we can get into that. There. Yeah. But yeah. So, yeah, definitely want to hear more about that. Um, you got your gadgets dusted off? Yes, I did. I mean, this stuff hasn't been out in a little while, so I had to dust it off, but um, yeah. I do. Okay. Um, do you want me just to go through the different types and talk about them, or do you want to ask direct questions or show and yeah. tell? <laughs> so, yeah, I know. It, it, well, it will be sort of like a show and tell. So what I'd like to do is um, you can just take your camera, show us first, like, what your favorite devices are. Tell us what they do and how they do it, if you know. Okay. So, um, yeah. my OCD brain wants to do it by type. That's fine. <laughs> Would that be okay? Because you, you were like, 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 like hey, what are you? <laughs> um, <laughs> you yes. Do, yeah. Would that be okay? If we, we do type. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I will say first, there's some things that you should have on an investigation that aren't necessarily what you would think is paranormal. Okay. And one is a first aid kit, which I forgot to bring in, um, but a, a first aid kit. You need that just in case, you know, you're walking around abandoned buildings a lot of times. So having a Band-Aid is helpful. Um, yeah. So definitely, you definitely need that. Um, then there's some other stuff, like everybody knows what these are. Right. Walkies. So, yeah, if you're going to be anywhere where you're going to be separated, especially if it's a larger location or abandoned location, you really want to have these. You really want to have these. And um, why is that? Because your cell phones wouldn't work? Well, you want to have your cell phones turned off because your cell phone affects the equipment. Ah. So cell phones are either turned off or on airplane mode. Um, so if you have your cell phone with you, you could still use it. But some places we go with cell phone reception is not all that great yeah. um the walkie talkies plus they're handy if you want to do like you can turn on the walkie talkie and someone have a walkie and put it in a room by itself with equipment and you can you can investigate that room without physically being in the room gotcha so there's there's other purposes for it um yeah. and this should be common sense but flashlights headlamps headlamps <laughs> Yeah, because you're carrying so much stuff in your hands most of the time, a headlamp is your best friend. Right. You, use, you want to get one that has the red light, because if you do the regular, the regular light, you're going to mess up your night vision. So oh, the red light is, is good. Um, yeah. This is just a level. Okay. And this is very handy if you have a client who my door keeps closing by itself. I'm seeing stuff move and it's always going in this direction. So it's, you just take this and you put it on the door to see if the door is level because if the door is not level, it could be causing it to swing shut or open depending. Um, you can check the floor. Yeah. Okay. So you wouldn't think of a level as paranormal, but when we're trying to debunk or trying to find other reasons for things, this is very handy. 
Exactly. That makes the world of sense. And this was like a dollar. Yeah. So probably the cheapest thing I have. <laughs> um, so those. Okay. I'll give you that. Do you want to talk about ITC devices? Do you want to talk about cameras? Do you want to talk about EMF devices? What are the ITCs? Okay, so ITC uh, stands for, oh gosh, my, I just totally had a, instrumental transcommunication is what it stands for. Instrumental transcommunication, okay. And that, any device you use to try to communicate with the other side is technically an ITC device. So your okay. audio recorders, your ghost box, your um, paranormal puck, your ovulus, those different kinds of things, that those are all ITC, but generally when you hear paranormal investigators talking about ITC, we're not talking about the audio recorders, we're talking more about the things where we can get real-time communication. So, I can't see if this is, where's the camera, there it is. So this is the SB7 spirit box. SB okay. Um, this device goes through radio frequencies at a very, very fast pace. So if, if I, the, I can't talk tonight. The, the, um, the rate that I put it on when I use it is 100, is the 100 rate, which basically means that it's on each radio station for a quarter of a second. So it, it no, actually it'd be less than that because it goes through, in one second, it goes through eight radio stations. Okay. So it, it sounds like ch -ch 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 -ch. it's really loud. It's kind of annoying, but you can ask questions. And every once in a while, <clears throat> a little bit will come through from a radio station. So you'll get like, eh, 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 yeah, sound. yeah. But if I ask a question, like I use a real example. So at my brother's house, I use this and I ask the question, who's the president of the United States? And I, we ask questions like that to find out what time frame the spirit's from. So we'll ask what's the year or president or whatever. Immediately goes Bill Clinton. Oh, wow. Really clear. So in order to say Bill Clinton, oh, they would have to have the exact syllables needed on all eight of those radio stations. Yeah, so it's right the likelihood. Right. So when it, intelligent responses like that is what we use this for. There's okay. two different ways to do it. We can just plug it up to an external speaker because the speaker on it sucks and just do it like that. And we can ask questions and see what responses we get. Um, the other way to do it is what we call the ghost box experiment. Mm -hmm. And when we do that, we have some, we have a camera on the person who's wearing headphones mm -hmm. and a mask. Oh, wow. So you're depriving your senses. Right. The head is plugged into the ghost box. Okay. So, and you want to use noise canceling headphones. So somebody is going to ask, one of the other investigators is going to ask questions. You can't hear the questions because you have this loud thing in your ears. So anything you hear, you just say out loud. And you want to look for, you know, something that's intelligent. Like, yes. So say I hear help and I say help and they say, well, what do you want us to help you with? My daughter. You know, so if you get, yeah. you're looking for intelligent responses. Right. Um, so that's that's the, the ghost box experiment. Let me see if I turn it on. You can kind of hear what it sounds like. Without plugging in the speaker. Why am I not hearing? I think the batteries are just about dead. Okay. You can see how fast it's going through. Can you see it at all? Yes, I do. Through. Yeah, it's scanning, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off because I can't hear it. But it makes a ch -ch 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 noise. Yeah. So the other two are that I have are both made by Bill Chappell. Bill Chappell is a engineer who makes yes. this stuff. He is a non-believer. He, non he doesn't believe in the paranormal or he's a very skeptical <laughs> believer, I'll say. 
<laughs> his, his equipment is, it's not cheap. Um, I saved up for quite a bit of time to get this stuff. Um, but these are two devices that he makes. One is the Ovulus, and this is the Ovulus 5, which tells you it's the fifth generation. So it's been around for a while. The other one is the Paranormal Puck. It looks like a little hockey puck. Um, and of course, I didn't charge anything. <laughs> yeah, I tried to turn it on so you could see it. But um, the way the puck works is there is actually an app that you have to have on your phone. And let me see, Paranormal. All is right. that the one that lights up? It, yeah, it'll light up. That's why I was trying to at least show you that part. So it, it has two functions. It has the ITC function, but it also has the function where it will detect, what is it? It's um, humidity changes, ionization changes, um, movement, and what is the other one? EMF. So you can have it be a device to detect changes in the environment or if you're gonna use it um, with the app, that is what that looks like. Um, and I, uh, we joke, we call it text a ghost because <laughs> you type the questions into the app yeah. and then hit enter. And the way the Ovulus and the Paranormal Puck work is the theory behind it is that the entities can alter the environmental factors to choose right. words. So it, the, the theory is the same with both. Um, so if you're asking, if my question is, um, how did you die? We'll go with that, that yeah. popular. How did you die? And the paranormal cup comes back and says knife. Okay, that's, that's, that's what we're looking for. That's an intelligent response. Now, if I ask, mm -hmm. how did you die? And it comes back and says, Pluto. I mean, he probably, they probably weren't on the way to Pluto and died, you know? So sometimes it'll send random things through. I think just because either I'm trying to figure it out or just from the environmental factors changing and a word coming through. So right. the investigator has to be aware. And sometimes with the puck, especially, well, and the, and the obulus, um, It'll be during review where I see the, the pattern. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just something to be aware of. They're, they're, they're good tools. The Ovulus, this is probably my favorite piece of equipment and the one that everyone on my team fights over getting to use. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it has a bunch, the five has a bunch of different functions. The, um, I'll put it up there. I don't know if you can read them or not, but there's a bunch of different functions for it. Yeah. And so the ITC function is dictionary mode. And timid, timid ambition. Timid ambition. Guy. Guy. There's no guy here. Are you a guy? Oh, you're in the area. So <laughs> and my house is haunted. So it is very possible that we could have all kinds of communication this, <laughs> this evening. Um, so that, that's that one. Um, the other one that I like to use is kind of like a sonar system. Oh. Ooh, no, not that one. Choose the wrong one. Is it this one? No, it's not that one. Did I not? What is going on? Yeah, I've heard a lot about the ovulus. Yeah, this is it. I'll let it go for just a second um, first so you can see what it does. Um, but the ovulus and the, the puck, are they're, they work essentially the exact same way. Yeah. I got the puck first um, because it was a little cheaper. And yeah. Then I was <laughs> um, so this, you see it, it's very slowly going around okay and what it's yeah. doing is it's looking for either static or emf oh i see okay cool so, i didn't know it did that yeah so if you're just sitting around and you have this laying down uh -huh. and you see the outer circle so yeah. if if something pings it it will these little lines on the outside will actually touch the outer circle and it'll make like this like sonar sound 
Yeah. Um, so if you have an idea, like, hey, we seem to be having activity in this area, you have it laying down, everything keeps pointing to the closet. Every time it goes by, it's pointing to the closet. You know, then that means there's some kind of disturbance there. Right. Whether it's paranormal or something else, there's something. Yeah. Um, so, and, and there's others, there's a phonetic mode. That is just making it, it, it sounds. Yeah. So this one allows them to not choose words from a word base. This one, they can make their own words. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So in fact, <laughs> we were at the um, Sedansville Rectory up in Ohio, which is a demonic uh -huh. haunt. Um, <laughs> they had to do an exorcism on the property before they sold it. Wow. That's um, and, and, it, and it wasn't the first exorcism so this and we were there we didn't went once and then we went back and stayed two nights so it's i can tell you legitimately or something really weird going on to that place um, wow what was i i was gonna say oh the phonetic yeah so there was a, this guy was cussing us like we were talking and it was f u can i say bad words well <laughs> i don't have any way of bleeping yeah. them so Okay, so the H word for when ladies are, you know, not get around. Yeah. Um, the C word for the same, um, yeah. just a whole bunch of cuss words. And it uh, it goes through, and at the time we didn't hear this one, but when I reviewed, I heard it back, and this is actually on our YouTube. Um, it says, you are a fat, H-O-E, <laughs> or H-O, wow. yeah. But it was like you are a fat. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it had been calling us every name in the book. So it's not yeah. like they knew. Um, yeah. yeah. And then the other time I had it work, it said F you. And that was at someone else's house. So um, every time I use the phonetic, I get cussed at. Um, <laughs> I'm sure that's not the case for everybody, but apparently for me, it is. Um, <laughs> So those are the, the ITC devices, although I will say um, technically audio recorders are. It's just not generally real time. Um, but you can, you can do a recording and play it back immediately to see if there's anything, which is called like burst sessions, um, live review. Um, but it's not, it's not quite the same as I ask a question, get a response. I ask a question, get a response. Right. Um, if you are only going to buy one piece of equipment, audio recorder. Gotcha. This, this one, Walmart sells for $50. It's good. Um, I think this one was a hundred dollars. Phillips. Yeah. This yeah. is probably one of my oldest. <laughs> which I don't remember what I paid for it, but I've had it forever. Yeah. And then I have a second fill up. So I have four at the moment. Um, cool. I want to get the Zoom, uh, one of the Zoom ones, but it's like $200, so. Really? Yeah. So that is, that's communication. Um, the only thing I'll add maybe is the flashlights. Yeah. It's super handy because one, they're a flashlight. But also these uh, magnite ones, you can turn them because so they turn on on the, this side. So you turn them to the point where they're just barely off. Yeah. And you can ask questions and you say, okay, you know, if there's someone here with us, can you touch the flashlight? And I always show, I always show them. I assume that I'm in a room with somebody and I show them what to do, regardless yeah. of what piece of equipment. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you can say, okay, if you're here, so they turn on a flashlight. Okay, that's great. Okay, turn the flashlight off. Flashlight turns off. Um, okay, which we'll make that your yes flashlight. So if the answer is yes, you touch that one. If the answer is no, you touch the other one. Um, yeah. And the trick with doing that, and you can do that with different devices, but the trick is you always want to ask the same question twice. You want to throw one in there because you want to see if, okay, so if I say, are you a man? And I get the yes flashlight or yes response on whatever device. Um, then I might wait a little while and say, are you a woman? 
because it's it's the same question it's just asked two different ways so if i say yeah. are you a man and the yes flashlight comes on and then three questions later i say are you a woman and the no flashlight comes on well then that's that verifies it helps verify that it's not right. just a fluke it coming on and off um so but and, what would I'm go sorry, go ahead. I was no, going to no. say, what would be the chances of uh, there being like multiple spirits in there? And maybe well, one? that's one of the questions I always ask. I say, you know, how many spirits are here? Because if you can get an idea, like, is it less than, is it, is it just you? You know, then there'll be yes or no. And then, uh, or is it more than five? Is it more than four? In the other case, so we, we're talking to three different people. So then that's going to be a different, I usually say something along the lines, well, choose one of you to be this, the person to communicate. Right, right. Otherwise, you're going to get all kinds of weird stuff and you don't know what's going on. Yeah. But you need, in order to bring something like that to a client, you need to show consistency. Yeah. If the flashlight is just randomly coming on and off or the REM pod or something is just randomly coming on and off. Okay, well, it's, a non, it's, it's anomalous but it's not showing intelligence. So it's a little, yeah. it's a little. <clears throat> yeah, I get that. Um, so let's do, I guess, EMF next. EMF, that would be great. EMF. So yeah. EMF, electromagnetic field or frequency. Um, everything in your house has it. Um, it also can come from the earth. So there's, there's geomagnetic energy. So there's different EMF devices and for ghost hunting, you know, now there are some devices that are made specifically for ghost hunting. But originally that wasn't the case. So we had to, people in this field had to take equipment from other areas and use it. Um, so one that you'll see a lot is the K2 meter. Yes, I saw, or I've seen K2 meters. Yeah, so the, the K2 meter is handy because in the dark, you can see the lights. Yeah. Um, this one happens to have a stand, so I can stand it somewhere. If not, just prop it against the wall. Mm -hmm. The bad thing about the K2 meter is that it picks up every, if your cell phone's on, it picks it up. If, oh. if you use the walkie talkies, it picks it up. Um, gotcha. So you have to be, if this is by itself in a room in front of a camera and nobody's there and it's going off, that might be something. Or right. again, if if you're asking the questions and you're getting consistent responses, like the little light that's on, that's just the power light. And I think the one next to it, well, it was flashing, but that was just because we're on, we're on hey, the device. On a phone yeah, call. On our devices, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, super handy because it's, you mm -hmm. know, you're in the dark and you got lights. Um, yeah. It's very easy to read. You just have to be cognizant. There's a lot of stuff that affects this. Okay. Um, so one that I prefer is the millimeter. Okay. Turn it on. I've heard of those. Yeah. So the millimeter is made by a guy named Gary Galka. Will you hold that up to the screen again? Yeah. I just turned it on to model mail. Okay. And okay. I, I won't go into all of it, but the guy who made this, he made it because his daughter died in a car crash. Mm-hmm. And it's named after her because her name was Melanie and she was born in 87 and died in 04. Aww. So it's Mel 8704. Wow. It's a, it's a pretty amazing story because he still communicates with her and um, I mean, it's very heartbreaking. It's a very heartbreaking story. Um, I'm but sure. He, but he's an engineer as well, I believe, and he's made all this, all this stuff. Um, this yeah. Came one of my favorites because it has the, the EMF that it measures is slightly different. So you could have a K2 meter sitting next to this and get a reading on the K2 and not on this and then get a reading on this, but not on the K2. Mm -hmm. um, and this one isn't as affected by signals. Gotcha. But it also temperature. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. Yeah. So you can see if the temperature is changing. Um, and this is the basic model. This is like the first one that came out. Now there's like a shadow detection on it. It has, it basically, it has the lights just like the K2. Mm -hmm. It has a rim function on the antenna. I mean, the one I want currently is like two, 240. So 240. Yeah. And this one you can buy for 99. But oh, I like wow. it. 
that it has both on it. So instead of two devices, you just need one. Right. And I have one of my little, little thermometers, which is- Oh, cool. Yeah. Great. Um, but when you have both in one, it's just one less thing to carry. Yeah. Um, and it has a little, a little stand so you can set it up. Nice. Um, with all EMF devices, if you move them around like this, they're gonna read a number, they're gonna read EMF because you're messing with the sensor. So when you're moving it, you wanna move it slow. Oh, uh, okay. So if you get, so you get a reading and you're trying to figure out if it's what it could be coming from, mm -hmm. you wanna go all the way up to the ceiling as far as you can go, all the way down to the floor, you know, and then both directions and see, okay, where, where is it coming from? Because it might lead you to something that gives off EMF, like halogen lamps and alarm clocks and appliances. So you, okay, well, that's not paranormal. Now, right. if you get a free floating EMF that's just in the middle of the room, doesn't seem to be coming from anything and it moves, that yeah. is probably paranormal. Yeah. Um, but it, whenever you get a reading, for me, anyways, whenever I get a reading, my first assumption is, what is it coming from? My first assumption is not, it's a ghost. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, is it coming from the light switch? Is it coming from unshittered wiring in the walls? You know? Right. I mean, um, another one of my favorite pieces. Oh, REM pod. <laughs> REM pod. Yes. If you watch any of the paranormal shows, you have seen one of these. Yes. Um, it, I have had some really amazing communication with this little guy. Yeah. So it, I don't know, it's going to beep when I hold it. So if you see the light, so this light right here is just telling you that it's on. And it's because I'm holding it. Okay. <laughs> so you can see it. You have to get within this, the area around the antenna. Wow. Close and it get more lights. So what it's doing is picking up your electromagnetic frequency. Yes. Wow. So th this this detects EMF. It's an it it puts out an EM field around the antenna, and if you interact with the field, and the closer you get, the more lights. That's amazing. Because we are electromagnetic beings. Yes. I think that's. I learned that, um, you know, from a doctor friend of mine, and it's just opened my perspective on everything. So, yeah. yeah. So, this little guy is good to like set in a room you're not going to be in. I like to set it on stairs because that's a very common, you know, area or in hallways. Um, it's, it's EMF, it's not static. So you don't have to worry about what you set it on. Mm -hmm. um, as opposed to this little guy, which we'll talk about in a minute. But okay. um, the EMF, you can use this one to communicate as well. Um, you just, you know, get us, get, if the answer is yes, you know, get us close. If it's not, you know, back up. And then sometimes you can even get them to do one for yes, two for no. Mm -hmm. But it's the same thing. You have to get confirmation because you, you're trying, if we're trying to do a scientific investigation. So just because this randomly goes off, Okay. Yeah. But is it going off when I'm asking questions? Is there somebody here? <laughs> you yeah. Know. And then when it's in its room by itself, if it's going off and the battery's new, because if it's an old battery, it will just, it'll go da -da 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 -da. very annoying. Yeah. Um, but as long as the, the battery is new, you don't have to worry about any of that. Um, this, especially with kids. If you have mm -hmm. spirit, kid spirits, the lights lighten up and, and the sound seems mm -hmm. to impress them. So that little guy. This is called a periscope. That's interesting. I've never seen one like that or seen anything like that, I should say. Yeah. Well, it's this is a new design from the, this is called the vertical periscope. They also okay. have a 360 periscope, which is Basically, it's kind of like this, but it has these all the way around it. Okay. So this detects static. 
and it makes a really kind of annoying sound. You hear the buzzing? I hear it. Anyways, that just makes yeah. it so So when they're static, I'm trying to cause static. It doesn't want me to cause static right now. <laughs> These, <laughs> I'm not static -y right now. Um, it'll light up. These are all different colors. Yeah. And it makes this really loud kind of screeching noise. And it changes as it as it moves. Hmm. Because it's static, you have to be careful what you set it on. So you're not going to set this on carpet. You're not going to set it on bedspreads. You want to set it on something solid, like you know, wood floor or wood table or something like that. Okay. So if it goes off when an investigator walks by, that's you have to throw that out as just being, you know, their static did it. Now, if it's by itself in a room where there's nothing it could be conducting static off of, mm -hmm. it doesn't read EMF. So energy, even from a natural source, isn't going to set this off. Yeah. If this set off, you know, it's static. Right. So this little guy, and it's made by a place called uh, Paraologies. And they make, they make a lot of para paranologies para paraologies i don't know i might be saying it wrong um but they are the ones who make this and the 360 oh. and a bunch of other stuff um it was working earlier <laughs> <laughs> um some simple stuff like this is an em pump so what this is doing is it's it's emitting emf into the room or into the area, it will go up over 200 milligauss, which is how we read EMF. Anything over 0.7 is considered high. So 0 0.7 is high, and this will go up over 200 milligauss. Okay. Um, wow. the, the purpose of it is you, so we think ghosts are energy, right? And they need energy right. to do things. So we're providing them EMF. Ah. But a lot of times I'll set this up in an area where they have a lot of activity while we're doing setup. And our and our baseline readings and all that, so that this can go and we're emitting EMF into the into the uh, room. Yeah. Oh, neat. <laughs> it will give you a headache, though. It, it it gives me a horrible headache. I can only be around it when it's on for like maybe five minutes. Really? Uh, yeah. Good to know. This is just a motion detector. Okay. Nothing special about it. Um, we'll set this places where we know we're not going to be. So again, if you hear something, and this one came from Lowe's for like 20 bucks. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. So their motion detectors are handy. We did all that. This is just a Laser. Oh. A lot of times if you're looking down a dark hallway, if you set the laser up, you can see if shadows move through it because it'll block out some of the lasers. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. I this, was is really, wondered. this is a really cheap and expensive one. Um, Ghoststop.com sells one that is awesome, but it's like a hundred dollars. Um, this is like 12. Wow. So it works. Um, that yeah. is good. That is the hundred dollar one. Um, yeah, I've wondered, I've seen that purple grid and I've often wondered what device they're using to get that. Yeah. And, and I'll just say this really fast. You need lots and lots yeah. <laughs> and lots <laughs> of batteries. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, we just go through batteries like nobody's business. Yeah, um, I can imagine. This is a little, it's called, we call it a cat ball because it looks like a cat ball. Yeah. I think it's name, if you buy it online, is like phantom ball or something. Yeah. But it has a little button on the top. Looks like a fishing float. <laughs> yeah. So you just, <laughs> you do that. And then if it, if there's any kind of movement, if they touch it or there's movement near it, it lights up. Oh, neat. Okay. And this is like $12. So. Okay. Of course, there's no way to replace a battery once it's gone. Oh, but, wow. 
if you're just going to set this somewhere like in a chair or something mm -hmm. it's a cheap way just to see if there's interaction because even right. though just going off from the chair might be like well did we hit the chair but if that happens and we start asking questions in that area and we get evps or things to uh collaborate with it then right um all i have left is video 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 stuff. okay video. um so this is a 4k full spectrum camcorder so mm -hmm. in the paranormal so we see in visual light what we see is what's called visual there's two other ends of the of the spectrum one is ultraviolet and one is infrared so the reason like when you're watching ghost shows and they're using night vision that's infrared so they're seeing it allows them to see in the dark um and then the full spectrum includes all three so it has visual infrared like the other cameras but it also has uv um, the reason that we want to use things like that is because the theory is so again everything's theory and paranormal um is that spirits entities whatever you want to call them show up in different spectrums so you'll right. catch them um, in the infrared or in the ultraviolet spectrum so that's this particular one it could be used as a regular camcorder it can be used with just um, night vision or it can be used with ultraviolet and if you buy these cam, this is a generic version of i would prefer to have a sony because all my cameras were sony but i wanted to upgrade to 4k and i, I didn't have a thousand dollars so yeah um but this one works just fine it's a 4k um this thing that's attached is called an arm. Okay. And I like this kind so that I can hold it there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it also has two slots for external illuminators. So if you just have the camera and you're in a very small bathroom, you can probably use it. If you're mm -hmm. in any bit of a larger space, it's not going to be enough light, infrared. That little that little thing right there. Yeah. Above my tail is the infrared light. Okay. So, you want the external illuminators, Let's see which one it is. Okay, so this one, you can't see that there's a light on, but this is infrared. Okay. Which other, other infrared will pick up. And if you look at it really close in the dark, you'll see a little bit of red light. Yeah. But it doesn't emit light that the eye can see. This other one blinds everybody when I use it, so I'm going to turn it. <laughs> it's the UV light. Ah, oh, nice. Um, and I had one that was the UV and the infrared invisible all in one illuminator and it fell during an investigation and broke. So I haven't replaced that. Yeah. And actually, I think it was paranormal because of the questions that were being asked at the time and the response we got after it happened. So yeah. it could have been, it might've just been me being a klutz because that does happen, but um, <laughs> And then extra batteries. I just took one out to show you because again. Yes. Right, right. Um this is this is a thermal imaging camera. So okay. this is in turn it on. It's coming up. Um this sees doesn't see light, it sees heat and cold. Wow. Yeah. So, and this is the, one of the inexpensive ones. If you want one that's really good, really good detail, those you're looking at over a thousand dollars, sometimes wow. two, even more. Um, but let me see. You can see. Oh, yes. So you see me? Yeah. Cool. That's, so yeah, this very cool. records video and does uh, photo. Yeah. Neat. Okay, it off. I only have two things left. <laughs> <clears throat> oh gosh. So this is called an SLS camera, structured light sensor. <gasps> that is the one I was hoping you would get to. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. the one I'm excited about. <laughs> um I made this one myself get out but you spend about the same amount of money making it as getting it so i would just recommend getting one um, okay but i do i cannot make this thing light 
it is really heavy. Um, wow. this is just the connect camera. That's what this bar thing is. Okay. Connect that you use for video games is what it is. And okay. what happens, I guess, is people are playing video games and you know it it maps you out to know how many players there are. So it was a common thing that was happening that periodically it would map in another player. So people were like, what is going on? So it, it got, um, <laughs> what's his name? Uh, Bill Chapel. he's the one that started using it. And you can buy one from them for about $1,300, but, and I would love to have that one just because of all the software that's on it, but yeah. you can also buy one online for like 400. Wow. So wow. They're, they're not bad. Um, and I, I, I'm pretty sure it's not charged. <laughs> <laughs> but what it is, it, so the way the connect camera works is it, it maps in your joints basically, and then it connects yeah. your joint. So if you see a person, it's going to look like a little stick figure. Yeah. Well, if there's a, another stick figure that where there's nobody at, so the first thing is you're going to be like, okay, well, is there something, um, uh, that's human, humanoid shaped. Cause like there was at the Monroe house up in Indiana, there was a um, Halloween decoration of like a hat old hag that was just kind of mm -hmm. sitting in the corner of one of the rooms. Yeah. And I went to the room doing my sweep and I'm, you know, just looking around and, I went, <laughs> and it mapped her in. So, um, <laughs> and I, I've tried, like I've stand in front of, I've stood in front of mirrors and reflective surfaces and I can't get it to map in me if I'm yeah. in a mirror or anything like that. So when it does happen, Sometimes you'll get a figure that just doesn't move. If the figure never moves, to me, that's that's not paranormal. Because paranormal generally is things that come and go. It's very transitional. Yeah. So for mm -hmm. something to just be stuck on the screen, I usually just turn it off and turn it back on. Yeah. Um, so, and we're looking for things like we'll ask, um, I think I see you, could you raise your arms? Yeah. So little stick figure arms go up, then you're yeah. like, oh, <laughs> you, know, you ask questions you know raise your hand if it's yes and um, yeah that is an amazing piece of equipment I'll just say um right yeah it is something that I definitely recommend getting if you have the money however if you're a brand new investigator like I have one last thing to, to show you but I'll say this first if you're a brand new investigator you don't have a lot of money and you need to get stuff there are three things you need to get Audio recorders first. You can easily get one for under fifty dollars. Then you want to get infrared or full spectrum camcorder because to say stuff is happening, you have no way to to, uh, to uh, record the event. Wasn't the word I was looking for, but we're going to go with that. And then it's EMF meter. So if you do have the EMF meter and it's going off. And you don't have anything to record it going off because it's mm -hmm. you're not going to hear it on the audio recorder mm -hmm. so you really need the the camcorder to see and i yeah. and i tell you that i've we have caught some pretty cool stuff on on camcorders very questionable crazy stuff um mm -hmm. so those are the three things camcorder at least night with night vision and not night what is it the camcorder companies call it? Um, night shot. You do not want night shot. You want night vision. Night vision. Infrared yeah. night vision. Because night shot just means it's a regular camcorder that has a light on it. Ah, oh, okay. So, well, that's, you know, if, if you're in a relatively lit space, you could probably use that. But then you're also, you know, jipping yourself of what's happening in that infrared spectrum. If right. you just you know, the regular camcorder. Um, right. The last thing I have is, it's gonna be easier for me to, well. So if you watch a lot of the paranormal shows, they'll have like a camera where they can look at certain areas of the location where they have it kind of preset up. Most of those are DVRs and we used to have a DVR. I recently upgraded. This one is actually called an NVR. Um, okay. VR is digital video recording. This is network video recording. Oh. The difference is this has higher quality of video. Uh -huh. um, 
and it's just a better system, it's also a lot easier to put together, to set up. Nice. So the camera, I have six of them currently. Oops, it's upside down. And obviously we're not mounting them anywhere. So that's kind of fun. Right. I like these cameras because it's flat. Mm -hmm. so I can just set it somewhere. I don't have to worry about trying to attach it somehow to a tripod. Mm -hmm. um, the NVR uses ethernet cable. So it doesn't matter if you run like 200 feet of cable and you get to where you're going and you realize you have the wrong end, <laughs> which happens a lot when you have DVRs because they use BNC cables, but this uses the ethernet. Okay. And this is a 4K system with audio. So normally it would be, um, it's hard to find one with audio that's good. That's yeah. cheap. Um, and this wasn't cheap, but um, it was less expensive than other options. Um, you want to have that because if one, you want to be able to see what's going on in the area around you and all that. Um, you can never have too much video. Yeah. And it also, whoever's going to be at your command station has something to monitor and say they see something and they can, you know, walkie talkie, the group that's in the area and say, I, think I saw a shadow in the gymnasium. Maybe you guys should go, go see that. So it's, it's right. handy. and it helps us know who's where, when. Yeah, for sure. For investigation. Yeah. Um, that is everything that I had out. Okay. So that is that is pretty much everything. Um, well, <laughs> I was gonna say I have a couple more questions for you if you're up for it. So the first video we did, we you addressed demonic hauntings and yes. you had talked about having a priest. So what about when you're at investigations like this and um, maybe it's someone's family member who's passed on, for instance, um, do you ever cross them over or because that's really not your job, right? No. Yeah. So we are very upfront about um, Eloise, you can't run with the food on your spinner. Hold on one second. <laughs> <laughs> oh, baby, here. Mama's going to take that yeah, out. I'm first. sitting here with Talia. Talia's <laughs> back here. <laughs> or your cat would be very happy. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> she's upset. She's like, you took my toy. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> no, so we're very upfront with our clients when we talk to them. Our job is to diagnose the problem. Right. So what we do is we go in with our equipment. We try to figure out what is or is not going on. Yeah. As much information as we can about it. And then we come back with our findings and we show them um, not just what we got, but what we think that means mm -hmm. and what they should do next. Right. Now, we don't just like say, that's it. Here's your stuff. We're out. Yeah. And there are teams who do that, especially yeah. newer teams. Um, that's why to me, the most important thing is helping people. Because me just saying, here's your stuff. Oh, we think you got a demon, bye. Yeah. It's not helpful. Um, so we tell them like the things that we think you should do, say like smudging with sage, getting holy water, you know, getting your house blessed by a religious uh, clergy member of your particular faith. Um, and then we stay with them through the process. And if they need help finding somebody, we will help them find somebody. Um, in the case that I talked about in the last, um, the last interview, that case was so bad that we just went ahead and got somebody. Yeah. Like it didn't need to wait another minute. Um, yeah. So, but generally that's, you know, we, we let them know up front because a lot of people just want whatever's there removed. And we don't do the removal part. We can tell you how to do it yourself. We can tell you, you know, the steps you need to take, who you need to go to for help. Um, but we don't actually do it. Right. You're Obviously. the researchers. Yeah. We're there to diagnose the problem, figure out what it is, what it's not, and go from there. But yeah, we don't just say, here's your stuff and walk away. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Well, this has been very enlightening. It has been tons of fun. Let us yeah. peek at the mice real quick, if that's okay. 
Uh, do you want to see mouse or rat or both or whichever? <laughs> They're just so cute. I love seeing your pictures on Facebook when I see Mystique Mousery. They're just so, so cute. So Kai Kai's a dirty boy right now. Oh. This is one of my, he's my, he's one of my sweetest, Aww. sweetest boys. Can we get really close? Do a close yes. up? Yes. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> How old is he? Um, he is a year and three months, I think. Oh, precious. That's Mr. Kai Kai. And then, <laughs> let's see. I want to see a mouse, huh? <laughs> Which mouse would it be easiest for me to get to right now? Hey, what about those black satins? Um, Are they too small to touch? No, I, yeah, I can touch them, but they're crazy. They're in their hopper stage right now. So they, oh, okay. if I tried to get them, they thing. would like, they would flip. Um, <laughs> I guess I could get Miss Eloise since I took her spinner. <laughs> Baby, come here. He's away. He's like, what? I don't want to be on TV. <laughs> come here, baby. <laughs> Mystique Paranormal Research Society and Mystique Mousery. I love it. Oh, this is Miss Eloise. She just had a litter three days ago. Oh, I love their ears. They're so cute. <laughs> oh, no. She's she is a she's a sweet girl. Yeah. She her last litter. Yeah. Oh. How old is she? Um, let's see. She was born in March. She was born um, St. Patrick's Day. Oh, cool. Yeah. Hi, so, honey. Hello. Hi, honey. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you for bringing yeah. them out for us to see. Absolutely. Love it. So now tell me again, how can people reach you if they suspect they have a haunting or paranormal activity? Um, well, first I'm going to say again, like I did last time that right now during the pandemic is not a time to bring a group into your house. Um, but we would, you know, we're more than happy to answer any questions you have, give you suggestions on things you can do. Um, so you can go to our website, which is just mysticueparanormal.com. You can find all kinds of information there. Um, you can find uh, our email addresses on there if you want to email. There is a contact us form, which you can do. The telephone number that's on there, like I said last time, just goes to a Google voice mailbox. So no one ever, ans no one ever answers that line because it doesn't ring to a phone. But I'll get, if you leave a voicemail, it gets sent to my email. Um, so then I listen and call back. Or there's also Facebook and Twitter. And all of that is on the website. All of that's on okay. the website. Yeah. Cool deal. Yep, yep, awesome. yep. Well, I appreciate you doing part two. Is there anything Absolutely. else you'd like to say before we close it out? Um, well, you know, Halloween's tomorrow. Right. And, and Halloween. All Hallows Eve is considered the time that the veil between the living and the dead is the thinnest. Correct. Um, so, and I've investigated on Halloween before and I personally haven't noticed a, a difference with it, but um, that doesn't mean that it might not be the case in your house, so. Right. You never know who might show up. Yeah, and, very and, true. And then I'll, I'll kind of say this again and I'll, I'll let you go and share another question is, you know, think of, if you're dealing with a human entity, you're dealing with somebody's mother, brother, sister, cousin. It's just another person like you or I that you can't see. Right. As weird as it sounds to talk to yourself in an empty room, just be like, hey, you know, you're scaring my kids. I don't think you, I, I don't appreciate that. I think that, you right. know, you can stay and that's fine, but I don't want you to bother my, you know, my children. Right. Want to hear or see you, you know, just talk to them like they're another person because there's yeah. a lot of mystique around ghosts and a lot of fear, but it's mostly just fear of the unknown. So sure. educate yourself on what it could be. Um, 
and kind of going from there is always the best. The best and if thing. they, let's just say they have this beloved grandmother who's hanging around, but they want her gone because they're scared, would they cross her over or just contact you and you'll find somebody? There is a, there's a store. I can't remember if it's on Highway 58, Dayton Boulevard. It's one of those new age stores and I can't think okay. of the name of it, but the, um, the people that run it do that and they do blessings like a oh, wow. national kind of non-religious specific religion based um, thing. And I, I would think that they could probably, that they could probably do that. Cool. Um, but you can also, I mean, just talk to them. A lot of times it's, they just want to be acknowledged. Sometimes when we go do investigations afterwards, you know, the activity stops because they yeah. wanted to be, acknowledged. they wanted to say something, Yeah. you know, and once that was done, they moved on. Right. So sometimes, you know, ignoring it's not always the best, you know, it's not right. always the best. Yeah. Yeah. For Especially sure. if it's your grandmother, if it's your grandmother, you can talk to her. You really yeah. know, you're like, look, you know, we all love you. We want you, you know, whatever's the best for you. And maybe it's time to, to, to move on and go be a grandpa or, you know, right. What, whatever the situation is. Cause you, yeah. you can talk to that person on a personal level because you know them. It's exactly. a little harder for somebody you don't know, but um, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you so much for coming back and doing part two. Absolutely. It has My been fun. Ghost hunting. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's a wonderful combination. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> awesome. Well, I appreciate you. I hope that you have an amazing Halloween and keep me posted on you. Okay. I will. Thanks for, thanks for doing this. Yes. I was educate. <laughs> yes. Awesome. All right. Well, I will let you go and stay in touch. Okay. All right. Bye. All right. Bye.